Hello, my name is Jan Nodelman, CTO of ID Advance Limited. This is an extract of a presentation of our new sensorless detection control and monitoring technology for bus DC motors, DCM motion technology, which we presented at the Motor, Drive and Automation Systems Conference in Texas in March 2011. First, I will give a short overview of the known rotation detection and counting methods for brush commutated electric motors. Some of the methods are also valid for other electric motor types. Then I would like to tell you about the discovery we, ma we made when we were experimenting with synchronous controls of motors in a particular application. The discovery of voltage transients being emitted from the motors during rotation and that they could be used for sensorless rotation detection, what we call transient detection, is the main subject of the presentation. Finally, I would like to give you an overview of the many motion control features DCM motion technology can offer and some of the potential product applications. Rotation detection of brush DC motors can be done in two ways. The most common way is to use sensors such as electronic hall elements which picks up signals from the small magnets attached to the motor shaft, a gear shaft or an actuator driven by the motor and sends a pulse back to the motor controller every time a magnet passes the hall element. Detection can also be done optically or electromechanically via switches but the idea is the same. These methods provide very accurate and reliable counting signals to the motor controller but since they require several sensor components and sensor and power wires, which often need to be drawn, fastened and secured over longer distances, and usually also require several connectors, they can be costly, in particular in applications where many motors need to be controlled, such as in a modern car. Therefore, sensorless rotation detection, where the rotation can be de detected directly on the power wires to the motor, is an attractive option. We only know of one sensorless method which has gained some popularity in recent years. This method is called ripple counting and works by measuring the current fluctuations generated by the commutating motor on one of the power wires. A lot of literature and academic articles can be found about ripple counting. Mostly they are about how to improve the detection and counting reliability by implementing very sophisticated and often complex detection and signal reconstruction algorithms in the motor controller. The reliability problems are caused by the current ripple waveform being influenced by the actual supply voltage and load, speed, direction and temperature of the motor. The inverse current when the motor starts and whether the motor is powered or coasting in generator mode driven by the rotating mass, the aging of the motor parts and electromagnetic interference are other factors influencing the reliability. About seven years ago, two Danish inventors and designers were experimenting with using sensorless ripple counting to control two motors in a synchronous way in a motorized height adjustable office desk, but they had problems to obtain sufficiently reliable counting in the system. When they started to look closer at the signals they picked up, they noticed that for every commutation of a motor, they could see some very distinct transients occurring. They began to analyze and study this further and realized that where ripple counting uses filtering to suppress such unwanted transients before the detector because they disturb the detection, the inventors got the idea to try to use another filter to extract the voltage transient and suppress the current ripples. Their discovery and work led to the sensorless transient detection method I will talk about now. Here is a simple brush commutating motor with two poles. To the left, the motor rotating clockwise in this example is at a stage where each commutator is just meeting a brush. When a commutator engages with a brush, a sudden change in impedance occurs due to what is known as the counter electromotive force or CEF. The change in impedance can be measured between the power wires to the motor as a short duration negative polarity voltage transient. We call this the impedance transient. To the right, each commutator is just leaving a brush. This causes the electromagnetic field in the coils to collapse, generating an arc or spark. Immediately after, there is another sudden change in impedance, again due to the counter electromotive force. The collapsing magnetic field and the sudden change in impedance can be measured between the power wires to the motor as a short positive polarity voltage transient, which we call the kickback transient. The kickback transient is immediately followed by a short duration negative polarity impedance transient. Here is a diagram of the detector we have developed for extracting the transients from the power wires. It is a simple and very cheap electronic circuit with only one active component. To the left we have the motor we want to detect. The first green box after the motor is a special back-to-back -back RC filter arrangement which snaps the voltage transients and suppresses the lower frequency ripples. Next, an AC coupler is inserted to DC isolate the 
detector from a single state differential amplifier used to amplify the detected transients, typically about four times. The detector has no separate power supply. It is a self-propelling circuit only powered by the signals from the motor. Our experiments have shown that this detector circuit works well for many motor types and we have tested quite a few over the years. Usually we only need to adjust a few component values in a detector to reliably detect transients of another motor type. Let's look at the signals from a real motor. These are signals we have measured when testing a 10-pole motor from the Japanese manufacturer Mabushi. This is a type of motor you will find in many automotive applications such as power windows and power seats. At the top is the red raw AC signal measured uh, between the power wires for one full motor rotation. You can clearly see each commutation. The slow variance signal is in fact very similar to the current ripples which can be detected as the voltage measured over a small resistor inserted in one of the power wires, as it is usually done in ripple counting. For each commutation, when the voltage turned negative, you can also see the high frequency short, short duration voltage transients which we can detect with our detector. The result of our detection is shown in the bottom black curve. The two types of transients we detect are marked with blue circles. The first negative is an impedance transient and the first positive the kickback transient and that is immediately followed by another negative impedance transient. You can also see that some commutation transients are double spikes which are very close to each other. This happens, for example, if the motor is not perfectly symmetric. There can also be more than two narrowly located transients. You will typically find that in a worn motor. This is an idealized picture of the transients detected by the transient detector, in this case for one rotation of a four-pole motor. The distinct pattern of the two types of transients we can detect for each commutation is what we call the transient fingerprint. A zoom-in of the transient fingerprint for one commutation is shown to the right. We can clearly see the negative impedance transients when a commutator engages with a brush and next, when a commutator leaves a brush, we have the positive kickback transient immediately followed by another negative impedance transient. This distinct transient fin fingerprint with three transients per commutation is what makes transient detection a very reliable method for commutation counting. The detected signals can be fed into a simple Smith trigger circuit to generate counting pulses but the real advantage and improved reliability of the method comes when the signals are digitized in the motor controller. Analyzing each fingerprint and comparing them, it is then possible to compensate for false transients as will often occur in a worn motor where the worn brushes tend to jump on accumulators. The rotation di direction, the speed, the power off point and many other useful parameters and information about the motor stage, status and condition can be derived. Let's take a look at a simple schematic diagram of a motor control circuit with sensorless transient detection and counting. The motor controller in the yellow box controls the power to the four-pole motor on the right. The signals from the motor power wires are fed into the green transient detector box. The red curve shows the raw AC signal with voltage ripples and transients. The transient detector output is the transient fingerprint shown in the lower gray box. The transient detector output is sent to the green counting and signal encoding box where the commutation counting pulses are generated. The commutation counting pulses are sent back into the motor controller to close the control loop. In a practical implementation, the green colored module shown here can either be separate from the motor controller or implemented on a tiny printed circuit board or they can be fully integrated in the motor controller where the detector will pick up the signals from the motor power wires inside the motor controller. Here we have tested transient counting on a Mabushi 8-pole motor. This is also a very common motor, often used in automotive applications. The motor was placed in a test stand and loaded with an adjustable brake directly on the motor shaft. We also attached an 8-slot photo detector to the motor shaft to use as a counting reference. The motor was powered with a 12-volt battery via a manual switch and the brake was adjusted to a load of 40% of the stall torque of the motor. For this experiment, we have used a simple Smith trigger circuit to encode the counting pulses from the transient detector. The blue curves show the result of the transient counting and the red curves are the reference counts from the photo detector. The upper section shows a full run of the motor from start to stop. About midway, we have marked the point where the power to the motor was turned off with a dotted black line. Because of the inertia of the rotating mass, the motor makes about takes about one third of a second to come to a complete stop. With transient counting, we counted the exact number of commutations that were registered by the photo detector. 
The lower section is a zoom in of the counts around the point where the power to the motor was turned off. From this point onwards, the motor works as a generator driven by the inertia of the rotating mass. You can see a longer counting pulse at this point because of a wide kickback transient when the power to the motor is turned off, but the number of counts is still correct. I mentioned earlier that sensorless ripple counting is not a very reliable counting method as a lot of parameters have influence on the current ripple signal. As I have shown, in sensorless transient counting, we rely on a distinct voltage transient generated by the motor. These appear to be much less influenced by the parameters influencing current ripple signals. Our many experiments and tests of different motor types with both new and worn motors have convinced us that sensorless transient detection is a very reliable method to detect commutations. Therefore, very reliable and robust counting signals can be derived from the transient detector. Whether the motor is loaded or unloaded, powered or unpowered, or new or worn, doesn't have any significant impact on the counting reliability. We have also successfully tested motors with built-in noise suppression circuits. We have verified that we can reliably detect commutations on the power wires up to a distance of 20 meters from the motor. Electromagnetic interference has limited influence on the detection and so has the conductivity of the surrounding air since the, this influences the intensity of the arc generated inside the motor. This may require some component values in, a in the detector to be optimized for a particular type of motor. You can watch the rest of this presentation in the video DCM Motion Technology Part 2.